All right, so from the network folder, what we're going to do is grab, if you don't have a copy of it yet, we're going to drag, uh, we're going to grab the uh, blogging uh, handout that I put together. So that's in the C, uh, that's on my computer, classroom data, campus blogging, and I've got a WordPress checklist. That's what I gave last week. That's what we were looking at. You can print it a little bit later when I turn the printer back on, but if you don't have a copy of it, just drag that to your desktop. And we're using that as a guide as we're crafting this blog post. Notice also from the previous weeks, I have whatever notes that I've written. So the dates, the, the dates are there on those notes, and those are any notes and thoughts I've written for the previous day, so you can get a copy of those. And I'll add one for the at the end of the day. But I'm going to have that PDF file open. I'm going to open those uh, that checklist. I'm going to keep it open off to the side here. And what we'll do is we'll get back to the blog that we were starting to write, and we're going to see where we left off, and then we're going to see what else we can add to the blog as per this handout. So did everyone get a chance to find that uh, PDF file? Okay, so now what we'll do is you go ahead and open up your web browser. And the blog that we're working on, the last time we left it, is at wordpress.com. So we'll have to log back into wordpress.com. Go ahead then and go back to wordpress.com and log in with the same information that you used last time. Remember on day one we created a wordpress.com account. Day two we logged into it to start our blog. Day three we're going to log into it again and go back to work on, on what we started. So log in. Take a moment to log in with your information from last time. So just log back into your WordPress and then we'll, we'll get back to our, our blog. And as I said previously, WordPress.com is a mixture between a blogging platform and to some degree also a bit of a social media platform. When we get to Tumblr, we'll see much more that there is that, uh, that, that those lines are being blurred. But on WordPress.com we have a place to create blogs and we have a place to try to get also likes and comments and that sort of thing that we get out of a social network. So when we first log into your site, your WordPress.com account, you might not be directly on your WordPress blog, so you'll have to click, click on the top left, My Sites. And if you've got more than one, if you've got more than one WordPress site, because you can create as many as you'd like, you might have to select up there, Switch site. So this is pointing me to the wrong site. I have to go to switch site and it's got my sites there. So once I've selected that, uh, I've got the right site, the right site loaded in WordPress.com. I need to go back to the dashboard to edit it. And you may see on the bottom left corner WP admin. So that's where you want to end up going. WP-admin. Yes, it's a little confusing, but the more you use it, the more it makes sense. So let's just pause here. Did everyone get a chance to go to their dashboard of their WordPress site? Not this one here, which is what I call the training wheels. And it's useful, but it's limited. You want to go to the dashboard, which looks like this. Did everyone get to that point? Yes. Click the very bottom icon there. It looks like a play button, but that will expand your sidebar or collapse it.
Okay, so the dashboard is where we get more of the power user features. What we have over here on training wheels serves us well, but it's limited. Um, and whenever you look up any tutorials and such on, uh, online about how to use WordPress, they're always really talking about the dashboard here. So we might as, well, might as well get used to using the dashboard rather than the training wheels. We can always get back to this screen also directly if you know the name of your WordPress site and then you add wp-admin at the end. Every WordPress site by default has that. So if I have victor.com and it's a WordPress site, I can go to victor.com slash wp-admin. Every WordPress site has that set up by default. And so uh, let's click on the left side, the posts link from the left side posts. This shows my list of all my posts. And so we've got Pecan Pie Recipe of the Month, and this is the one we're going to work with in just a moment. This is still a draft because we didn't finish last time, so as long as we're here, we'll be able to proceed. Question? So most likely, uh, you know, logins that are password and stuff you used before. Yes. Um, so, you said it has different posts in your website. Um, do all of them get published, or like, how do you can you tell whether they're published or not? Yes, you can tell right here. So, the question is can you tell if they get published automatically? Yeah. They don't get published automatically until you click the button. So, just to show you quickly, when you're writing a blog post, you're going to have a button that says publish. It will not be published until you click that. They'll be saved as a draft. And that's most likely what we did last time. We were working, we clicked draft, and I can see here that what we worked on last time is still as a draft. When it's published, it won't say draft. So this one has been published. It should say, I guess, published, but they didn't make it that way. It'll say draft if it's draft, and if it's published and everyone can see it, it won't say anything. Uh, what you can also do is if you look at the top, it says, I've, in total, I've got two posts. One has been published, one is in draft. So if I click there, it'll show me only the published post or only the draft post. All right, so the idea was we spent time on day one to think about uh, concepts to write about. Um, because blogging is going to be most effective when you do it on a regular basis. That's one of my checkpoints here on the checklist, uh, which is dis develop a serious concept and think about variety. So one of the things that I'm going to be posting on a regular basis for this fictional site is our recipe of the month. This month will be pecan pie, next month will be uh, German chocolate cake, next month will be whatever. I can make a recipe post um, once a month. That's a very good goal. Uh, later on we'll talk about a different blog post because I also want to think about variety so maybe I'll be writing other kinds of posts but I'm gonna get back to the one I was writing previously notice uh, one of the things that I, that I see a lot with WordPress here and there is that something is not obvious until you put your mouse over it I want to go back to edit pecan pie draft it's not obvious until I put my mouse over it and then it says edit so those buttons don't appear until you hover over. And that happens on a few spots in WordPress. So if something, something doesn't make sense, try putting your mouse over it and see if you get any, any options. Here we get preview, which is show me what it looks like at the moment. You don't have to click it, but it looks like this so far. Uh, we have trash, which will delete it. But just like on your computer, 
Windows or Mac, when you delete something, it doesn't automatically go away completely. On Windows, it goes to the recycle bin. On a Mac, it goes to the trash can. You can still pull it out if you accidentally deleted it in Windows. In WordPress, same thing. If I click trash, don't click trash, but if I click trash, it's not deleted. It goes over to the trash screen. And anything that I've trashed, I can still bring back. So if I did trash it on purpose or accident, I can go back to the trash, hover over, select delete permanently, and then it's really gone, or restore. So WordPress has a really good memory. You deleted stuff, but it's still there if you really want to bring it back. I don't believe it auto-deletes itself. I'd have to look that up. Uh, but if you delete it and you come back a week later, it should still be there. A day later, it should, should still be there. I'm not sure if it deletes itself after a month or something. I'd have to look it up. But it has a good memory because whenever you delete something, you can still bring it back. And later on, we'll see that WordPress is also remembering all, all of the revisions of your work. We'll see why that's valuable later. We have also here quick edit. If you click quick edit, this allows you to this allows you to change a few things very quickly. Uh, the title, the date, what category is it under? We'll talk about categories. I think we've already talked about categories, but we'll reiterate it in a little bit. Tags. So the quick edit has some useful things, such as a field to activate a password or private. What this does is that if I select private and after I publish this, if I publish it, everyone in the world could see it. But if I publish it and then click private, what will happen is no one can find it except if they have the link. So if you uh, have an email list or you're on social media and you share the link to your um, post uh, when it's private, no one can see it except those that have the link. Another thing you can do here is if you activate password, what will happen here is that um, People will be able to see that it exists on your website, but they won't be able to read it unless they provide a password. So let's make some notes here. We have the states of publish, let's say published, draft, private, and password. published is anyone in the world can see it, find it, and use a link to see it. If someone has the link to that post, they can, they can follow the link to, to view your post. If they search Google search, they might find your post. If they search in WordPress.com, they might find your post. If they know the name of your website on, on WordPress and they see your site, they can find your post there. So published is the most open of all. Draft. No one can see it except admins. Except those that have access to the login to WordPress.com. Only those people can see it. It will not be an active link. Even if it was published one time and someone saved the link to that published version and you turn it into draft, when they try to follow that link, it's no longer public. So they won't see it. It's been put, it's been put hidden inside of the dashboard. No one can access it except you that created it or other people that have the admin access. private. Um, anyone with the link can see the post. The address to the post. 
They won't be able to find it with a search in Google or a search in WordPress.com. If they have the link, they can get back to it, but it's, it's private. It's sort of like uh, in the phone book. Uh, if you had your name in the phone book, anyone can see it. You know, there's a million names there. If they, if they look for you alphabetically, they can find you. But then you can ask the phone company or pay for the co phone company, the phone book company, not to put your name in there, so it's private. But someone could still get your phone number somehow and call you. Here, if someone has the link, they can still see the post. People sometimes make this mistake about putting it into private when they meant to put it into draft. You're writing this great article, you published it on accident, and you thought, whoops, it shouldn't be seen by people yet, let me put it to private. No, people could still possibly get to it while you're still writing it. You should actually change it back to draft so that no one can see it while you finish writing it. And password. If they have the link, they can get to the file. If they uh, the the post, if they search, they can get to the to the uh, post. So anyone can get to the post, but you need a reader needs a password to view the post. This is one way to have exclusive content, perhaps that you have people pay for. Um, it's out of our scope to talk about it here, but the theory is if you set up some sort of system, maybe through PayPal or something, where you can sell access to your articles, you know, 99 cents an article, $5 an article, whatever, if you sell access, then you give the person the password, and then they can view the post. And that password is set right there. You type in a password, and if someone visits that link, it'll say, please put the password. They will not be able to see it without the password. Now, this is not the most robust way to do this. This is not the most way to sell your content. Because you give someone the password, there's nothing to stop them from them sharing that password. Someone bought your article for 99 cents, they got your, your, your password for that article, and then they sent an email to all their 20 friends and family that says, hey everyone, read this great article. Here's the password. And then two of those people send it to 30 of their friends, and then your, your, your content is out there. So this is not really that secure or that powerful. You would have to go off and find some other service, plug in and such, to give you more power to sell your content. So those are the different states or statuses. Mine is currently set to draft. Pending review, don't worry about that. Uh, let's see what else is here. Uh, make this post sticky. So as you write new articles, the newer one will push down the older one. That's the default nature. Maybe there's an article that you need for people to see or to be able to see easily first. If I select to make it sticky, it'll get stuck to the top. This one will be visible always first. Then the next chronological ones follow. So if you're some sort of, um, if you're writing about a topic, you're, you write a lot about science, for example, you write a lot of science articles and people often ask the same sort of science questions, you might create a frequently asked questions post and then make it sticky so that's the, it's the first one that everyone sees so they stop asking you frequently that same question or questions. I believe if you can put more than one post as sticky, which sort of defeats the purpose, uh, usually you'll have one, but if you put two or three, let's say, I believe the way it orders it is still by date. So based on when it was published, it'll be sticky. So all three of those posts will be first, but it'll still be ordered by the date. One other, one other, one other thing that I like about the quick edit screen here is that here's a place where you can quickly turn on or off comments. Uh, we had a setting that we saw a while ago on day one about turning on or off comments for everything on your site. That may be 
too draconian, that may be the nuclear option, that may be too much. You want a couple of posts to have the comments off, but most of them on, let's say for example. So the way you would do that quickly is you go to quick edit the post, and you turn off allow comments. Now that post itself will not have comments. I don't think it deletes comments that previously existed. Well, we can check that, but uh, they'll probably still be saved in the WordPress database internally, and then when you turn them back on, I think they're still there. But in any event, this is for you to turn it on or off, and that's up to you to decide if that's something you want to do. So if I didn't quite go into anything about here, we're going to skip it for the moment. But any questions on Quick Edit? Right, you can, if you made any changes there, you can update or you can cancel. What Quick Edit will not allow you to do is actually edit the content of your post. So let's go ahead and select Edit. Let's edit the post we started last week. So we were starting to write this post. We talked about a snippet to entice people to read, adding the read more tag. We talked about headings, subheadings. We talked about bullet points and numbered lists. Talked about adding an image. We talked about frequency. Remember the goal could be once a month. The length could be about 100 words. So far I've got 45, so I've still got a little bit more to write. We talked about writing a good title. Description. Uh, okay, we haven't gone to description yet. Description you may write before or after you've actually written the article. I usually write it afterward. Because after I've written something, then I have an idea of how I want to present it to people. That's found here under the excerpt. If you scroll down, you should see excerpt. If you don't see the excerpt box, that could be because on your screen options at the top right, you may have that off. So just to see all our possible options, I went back to the top, selected screen options, and turned everything off. And we're going to look at excerpts. Question? Oh. So the excerpt box is a place for you to craft um, in about 150 characters. It doesn't tell you that anywhere here, but in about 150 characters, not words, characters, which includes letters and numbers and spaces and symbols, you want to write a sentence or two, whatever fits, to give a preview of what this post is about, and that is to show you here uh, what is Mexican Moronga. When someone searches, uh, there will be this excerpt right here. So that's what we're that's what we're crafting with that ex excerpt. What are you going to show the world when they search? Now it's any search engine. I searched on Yahoo. You might search on Google, Bing, AOL search, whatever. Whatever way you search, they're all showing the same sort of thing. A title of a post, an address, and a description. And so that's what we've got here. A title, a link, uh, never mind that mine says trashed, don't worry about that. But um, that's the link right there, uh, the permalink, the link of this post which comes automatically from your title, which you can edit if you'd like. I might as well edit it just in case. Pecan pie recipe. You don't have to change yours if it says something meaningful. I trashed mine, so it said trashed. So 
Don't worry about it. And then the third thing the search engine shows you is the description. Question. You should put dashes, and it'll do it for us, but you should put dashes because this separates real words. If we kept it all without dashes, there would be the word pecan pie recipe. That's not a word. Pecan pie recipe. Those are words. So we tell the search engine that they are separate words with dashes. We could use underscores, but most common nowadays is to use dashes. And so to craft this message, notice I did a search for this. It came up with the Wikipedia article. Wikipedia then starts to tell us what that is, and then it gets cut off. There's over here uh, a YouTube video about this. It starts to tell us what it is, and then it gets cut off. Then we've got another one here. It tells us it gets cut off. The only one that has not been cut off is the one right here. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned it, but this is actually one of our clients. One of my company's clients, Akia Sticks Coco, Mexican food restaurant, I'm sure I mentioned them. Uh, we have blog posts there, and one of the blog posts is a, uh, a description about what this traditional Mexican food is. Our, notice our description here is not cut off. We handcrafted it. We wrote it ourselves. Because if you don't, the search engine is going to look at, well, what's the first thing you wrote? And then it'll grab a piece of it and put it on screen, and you may cut off at a certain point, and you've got an incomplete sentence, like we've got on every other result here, except these guys down here. No, wait, that's us again. Yeah. Except these guys over here. So if you don't want your, your text cut off, if you want complete sentences, this is not a big, big deal, but if you want a complete sentence in this short amount of space, or if you want to write something different to catch more attention than what is on the first paragraph of your text, that's what the excerpt is. And that's why I'm saying you may write this before or after. I usually write it after because then I can think about what did I write and how can I tease it and, and, and craft it easiest after the fact. So I'm not going to write the excerpt yet. We'll come back to it. Yes? The, the, the big difference is that this is technically um, a description that is inside of the code of the website. There's going to be a code in here that says description equals this. And therefore, the search engine will look for that. If the search engine doesn't find that, then it will say, OK, what's on the first paragraph of the article? And it may be good enough or not. Yes. Would you want the excerpt to be like a teaser, or would you want it to just like sum up the whole blog? Either way, I think is is valuable to do, to tease people to read it, or to summarize it. Either way, as long as you've got the keywords that people might be searching for, I searched up here. What is Mexican moronga? And so there's, it highlights the keywords, Moronga, Mexican, Mexico. So whatever you write there is good as long as you think in terms of keywords. So that's a description. Entice them to read or uh, create a summary. The summary should still entice, entice people to read. We added image. We added an image, and we had a big discussion about images. Did headings? Did lists? Okay, let's talk about links. Relevant internal links. Relevant external links. So you you're gonna write something, and this will make sense the more you write the more posts of yours you write. So let's make a note here, internal links tips. Uh, when appropriate, appropriate, um, make links from your current post to past posts. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, of course. But the idea is I'm writing something, 
and I want to have a link from the current post to something else. The point of that is keep people on your site longer. Have someone read something and then read something else and then maybe read something else. Well, why keep them on my site? The purpose of your of your site, of course, whatever your purpose of your site is. The purpose of my comic book blog is for people to read more of my posts, but actually the purpose is perhaps maybe they'll click on an ad, I'll get a little revenue out of that. Maybe the purpose of the Texcoco blog is for them to get hungry and click on order now. Maybe the, po the, the point of my tech blog, my how-to WordPress tech blog, is for people to read more of these articles and then say, I need a WordPress blog, I need a WordPress site, and this person seems to know what they're doing. Oh, there's a button there that says hire me. So whatever the purpose is of your site, to get hired for something, to get donations, to get fame, to get ad revenue, whatever the purpose of your site, the longer you keep them on your site, the more chance there is that the ultimate goal is accomplished. So we have to think about how can I link my current post to at least one other of my posts. We don't have very many others to work with. We'll just work with the one we have. We'll see how that, how that is done. Let's say, let's say, I have at least one other post called first blog post. So, I, before I get to the conclusion, I'm going to have a new section where I write a little bit more than just the ingredients and such. I'm going to write, again, thinking in terms of keywords that people are searching. Something like, uh, this classic recipe has a new twist because blah, 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 blah. And let's say I'm writing something meaningful here. Okay. And then I'm writing something. Um, this is a variation of our uh, three layer chocolate cake. This might be a prime opportunity then. If I did write some other post recipe of the month, three-layer chocolate cake. This is a prime opportunity then from this post to link to a past post. The way we do this is you select whatever word or words or sentence that you want to make the active link. So I'm going to select three-layer chocolate cake. I'm going to select what I want to be active. And you see at the top row of tools, you'll see a chain to link, to link text. If I selected the text, then I click Insert Link. Click the chain. It pops up here. Okay, paste URL or type to search. So we can uh, put in an external link or an internal link. It doesn't quite name it like that, but paste URL usually is going to be the external link. Someone else's website, we'll talk about that soon. Or type to search, that's search on your own WordPress to find one of your own articles. If I had an article called three layer cake, as I start to type it, it'll find it and it'll let me link it. We don't have another article called that. I've got another article called first blog post. Uh, probably you as well. So I'm going to start typing first blog. It should see it should see your previous blog posts that have those keywords. Again, in our case it doesn't make sense, but the concept is I'm linking to some other post within my own blog that makes sense. This one doesn't make sense, but that's all we have to work with. And then I will apply it. I 
and we'll apply it. And now that text there, depending on your theme, is going to become an active link. Mine becomes green, and there's an underline on it to show it's a link when I hover my mouse over it. But that's become an internal link. So the point of this is someone reads this this post, they get to that link, they might click the link and go read another article within your own site. That means that if they click this link one paragraph in, out of your seven paragraphs, they may not read the whole thing. It's not right or wrong to do that, but think about that. A person may click your link early on and not complete reading this article. I've added it near the end, maybe I should add it more to the conclusion section. If I add it toward the end of my article, I've given them the chance to read the article more completely before they go off to read something else. So, you can add as many internal links as you want. I recommend near the end of your posts, just to give people a chance to read the article more completely and then they can go read more. Uh, if you put a link early on, they may not follow up and read the current article. External links tips. Again, uh, where appropriate, make a link Make links to other people's sites or blogs where appropriate. Either the home page of someone else's site or most likely some specific blog post on someone else's site. I'm going to say usually to another direct blog post. Usually not to their home page, directly to another blog post. Another blog post, another post along the lines of your current post or current concept of your post. You don't want to just li link willy-nilly to other people's blogs for no reason. You want to link my cooking blog to someone else's cooking blog. My tech blog to someone else's tech blog. Um, specifically to an article, a post on someone else's blog. Reason. To entice backlinks. Backlinks, also known as inbound links, incoming links, I think they have a couple of other names, links from someone else's site to your site. You want to get backlinks. This is one of the many signals that the search engines look at to determine your ranking. You may write amazing content, you may follow all of the rules, but the one thing that you're missing, perhaps, no one is linking back to your site. That could be what's holding you back. So someone else linking to me, compared to my competitor that has no backlinks, that could be a way that the search engine ranks you higher than your competitor. Now this is often the hardest thing to do, because the search engines are very picky about this, very picky about backlinks. So let's take a, a little detour to talk about backlinks. Links from another site to your site. Relevant links to your site. So 
not spam links, not links that you paid for, not links that you asked for, and not links that you traded for. That sounds like a lot of work. If I cannot pay for another site to link to me, if I cannot send an email to another site to link to me, if I cannot say to another site, I'll link to you if you link to me, that's a, that's a high bar to clear. That's why backlinks are a challenge. One way to get this is what I'm talking about right here. Make a link to some other website, to some other website's blog post. Because when one WordPress site links to another WordPress site, the other WordPress site gets a notification that says, you know, Victor's Bakery linked to your site. And what the webmaster of that other site could do is see the link and ignore it, or see the link, go back to your site. That's a little traffic there. Better yet, they come back to your site and they say, this is a good site. I like that article. I'm going to write an article in the future and think about linking to them at some point. We're not doing a trade for a link. We're not asking for a link. We're not paying for a link. We're just making another site aware that we exist. Another site aware that we exist in the same relevant sphere as them. And then it's still up to them to write something to link back to us. That's as best as we can do. That's what the search engines want. We don't want any of this. Spammers do that. And the search engines really now behave in a way of guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. Guilt by association. If your website is connected to a lot of spam sites, you're a spam site. If uh, your website uses a lot of spam techniques, you're a spam site. Uh, if it uh, walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a spam duck. So don't be a spam duck. Do it the hard way, which leads you to much better results. Uh, because this works. We do this for our clients. Again, everything I'm teaching you in these classes, we do this for real clients. And I'm teaching you this stuff for real clients because real clients pay real money. And, <clears throat> and then they get real mad when you don't do it real right. <coughs> so this is what we do. We write an article. We do research about some other relevant site. We'll, we'll try that out in a moment. And then we link to that other site. We may never get anything out of it. But if we do, that is gold. That's a backlink that's very valuable in modern SEO. Links from other people's sites. In the old days, what we would do is we would build a website and then we would have a page called Link Circle or Link Sharing or whatever. And on that page, it would just be full of links to other people's websites. And in the old days, that was good. It's not the old days anymore. That doesn't work anymore. In the old days, we would have these link sharing rings. Uh, I remember you would put this code into your site and your site would be linked to all these other sites, all these other irrelevant sites. My baking site would be linked to a, a fashion site and that fashion site would be linked to a phishing site. And there's no relevance to their relationship to be linked, so the search engines discount that now. This is the way you do it. We'll do it right now. Any, any questions on the concept? It is kind of tricky, but we'll do it right now. Any, any questions? The way we do it is, um, I've got my own internal link here. However is relevant for me to write, however is natural for me to write, I'm going to think about adding a link to someone else's site. Let's say I add it under conclusion, because again, um, perhaps toward the end of the article to keep people longer on the article. After the picture, let's say, I'll click somewhere at the bottom here, enter. Okay, so on the last, last paragraph, I'm going to say, um, however you spend your weekends, baking is one of the best ways to do it. Be inspired and get in the kitchen. I don't have to put some sort of wording 
that is super obvious that I'm linking to someone else's site. I don't have to say, and don't forget to visit uh, johnscookinghouse.net. I don't have to be that obvious. From what I've written here, I can craft a link. For example, I'm going to make the words get in the kitchen. Get to the kitchen. That might be nicer to say. Get to the kitchen. That text, I will link it to some other kind of cooking or baking site. That means I need to go do some research. I'm going to go to some search engine, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever. I'm going to open another window and go do a, a quick search. Um, uh, I don't know, I'll do DIY kitchen recipes, free kitchen tips, DIY kitchen beauty recipes. Just going to do a search. I haven't planned this. I'm doing it live. I'm going to do a search. There's some articles that come up. Pinterest link, sunset.com, Amazon. Put this one at the top here, thekitchen.com. I'm going to check that one out. Nice looking site. Well, this is the hip modern way to spell. You forget, you forget a vowel or two. That's the cool way to do it. Um, looks well written, good pictures, internal links. Notice how they're doing these links like I'm talking about. Bullet points and headings like I'm talking about. They, these guys were the number one result. These people were the number one result. Uh, check out these sites that are number one and see how they follow a lot of the rules that, you know, that I'm talking about. But uh, let's just say as an example, this could be something that I want to link to. The purpose of this is because this is a top rated result on a search. It would be very cool for me to get a link back from them, but they don't know I exist. And I'm not going to go beg, I'm not going to go send an email, I'm not going to request a link. I'm going to link from my page to their page. They will get a notification. They may choose to follow through or may not. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I'm going to say this fits the bill, so I will go to the address of this particular site and copy the link. On the text that I wrote, I select it, I'll click the link button, and I'll paste this link. So notice this is several steps. I'll write them down in a moment. But I have to uh, search find an article, copy the address, paste the address link here. This search here does not search the internet, it searches your own site. So paste an address from the internet, apply. After I publish this, the internal WordPress system will automatically send a notification basically to the other site the creators of that other site will get the notification. They can ignore it or act upon it. And in the best case scenario, I get a link back somehow. I can't control it, but I might get a link back somehow. And that's great for your SEO. The more links from other relevant sites, the better. The higher you'll rank and the faster. One of the many tips and signals that the search engines look for to rank you. Everything that we've got on this checklist is part of that. So the more of these things you do, the more it will help you write and get ranked. And this is a very valuable one, but notice all this effort. So external links. That's the reason. Steps. Write something natural on your own post. Research another site usually a blog site. You're not really going to care about linking over very much to Wikipedia. You're 
not going to get a link back from that. You're not going to care too much about linking over to Amazon. You're not going to get a link back from Amazon. You're going to link to some other blog site. Research another site related to your topic, your post. It can be related to your whole site or that one post. That's fine, but it has to be related. I'm not going to link my pecan pie recipe over to a movie review site unless they're re reviewing a movie that has to do with pecan pie. Is there a movie out there about pecan pie? That, that it's in the plot somehow? No? Layer cake? Um, research one, find one, copy the URL, copy its link, its address on your post, highlight Uh, words or phrases, add link, paste the URL. So basically those are the steps. About five steps or so to make good external links. And this is something you can do as you're writing or maybe at the end. Personally, I do it at the end. I write the whole thing, I think about what I've written, I see, okay, possibly this is a keyword or this is a concept that I can then add a link to to an external site, then I go off to do the research, add the link, then publish. Let me make a step for A. Um, select words that make sense out of context. Whatever words you select in your article that will be links, either internal or external, think about if they make sense out of context. Let me show you the wrong example that everyone does. Want to learn more? Click here. If I make the words click here, the link, that's not right. Because if you take click here out of context, click here can be click here for any kind of site in the world. And the search engines pay attention to this. They pay attention to what is your anchor text. What is the text that you're using as an anchor to link elsewhere, even to your own internal stuff? So avoid being so generic, click here, view this article. You know, if I have the sentence, read this too, and I make the word this the active link, that's the same sort of problem as this. It's not, it doesn't make sense out of context. Extract the link out of context, does it still make sense? Get to the kitchen still makes sense. It's still about something about cooking, something about baking maybe, something about the kitchen, something about food. That makes sense out of context, in context. Click here, makes sense on my cooking site, on my comic book site, on my uh, tax site, on my uh, whatever site. It makes sense everywhere and therefore has no meaning. This has a meaning just for a kind of a cooking site. It's not as hard as, as this is not as hard as you think. It's just that don't use click here, view this, you know, don't use such a basic sort of way to link. Don't just don't use such basic anchor text. Look at this. I did it subconsciously over here. I didn't explain it, but I did it up here too. This is a variation of our layer cake, our three-layer cake. I could have made this as the link. I consciously did not to then double back, circle back, and show you what I was, what I was talking about. I made three-layer chocolate cake as the active link. Out of context, that makes perfect sense. This, out of context, does not. So internal and external links are very valuable. The search engines look at that. 
I wouldn't quite go crazy and put like 10 or 20 of them. Uh, a conservative amount is good. One to three, internal and external. Actually, I would say two to three. One internal, one external, at least. More than that, then you're putting too much and maybe you're you're kind of hurting yourself because you've got so many things to click on. People go wander off elsewhere. They don't read your article. So two. One of each is fine. Let me back up over here. External links, reason. Uh, I'll back up one more thing about the description here. Usually set them as um, the technical term is target blank. I'll explain that right now. The technical term target blank, which is the, the way to say external links should open in their own window, should open in their own tab. You've seen that, I'm sure, that you're reading something, you click a, a link and it opens in its own window. The purpose of that is that when someone goes off to read that other article, they're done with it, they close that window, they're still on your site because it opened in a separate window. The default does not do that. The default keeps every link that you follow in the same window. And therefore, if you guided people to someone else's site, and they finish that site and close the, close the window, they closed your site too. So let's, t let's deal with this. If I link to someone else's website, most likely, usually, I want that to open in its own window. Let me do that like this. At the moment when I'm setting the link, did you see this little gear here? I'll show you two ways to do it. As we're setting the link, we can click the gear, and then we'll have the option, open link in new tab. If you've already set a link like we've already done, and you click the link, it pops up to show you where it's going, and an edit pencil. So if I've already added a link, click on it to edit the link, then you get the link options, then you select open link in a new tab. I'll click update there. After this gets published, the way that this will behave is someone reads this article up to this point, clicks that link, new window. Um, they're finished with that article, they close that article, they're still on my article. If I don't set that, they lose my article. Unless they click back and back and back and back, this is easier. Yes? Could you add the uh, link to that text? You mean when I selected it and then added yeah. the link? Yes. Yes, exactly. So adding a link here, it notifies the other site. So I use WordPress for a while and I see it evolving and the latest evolution of it, and I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet. The latest thing is that if you select the text and you add a link, from within this screen you can add your addresses and so forth. The old way, I kind of like for a different reason in that you select your text, you click the link, and then you click the, the link here. If you don't type anything here and you go directly to link options, I like this, that this will show me all of my posts and pages that I could select internally. If I don't go to that gear, those options, I have to remember what did I call my post and I need to start to type the keywords. Uh, did I call it final or did I call it first? What did I call it? I don't remember. Well, if you go to the gear, this will show you the most recent pages, the most recent posts and pages that you can quickly link to. Maybe I need to click to my contact screen. I'm writing something and I'm saying, and if you have any trouble with this cake, send us a note and we'll help you out. So I can link people over to my contact page. Think about that. Don't just think about linking to other posts. But what if you need to link people from your, from your article over to your shop page or to your contact page or to a specific product on your own page? 
those things will be listed here on this screen. I like this screen a little better. It's you know more, more to look at. But I like here because you can get a list of your recent posts or pages and you still got search here. So if you've got a bunch of them, you can still start to search and it'll, and it'll find what you're looking for. Or from this screen, you can also add an address here. So if you've copied and pasted the address over here, so if you've got some other link, you can still add it here. It doesn't just have to be your own internal items. It could link to someone else's site. That's the text that you just highlighted, which again, that's very bad text. Open it in a new, in a new link if it's external. If it's internal, you usually don't select that. If I say, if I have it linked to some other of my posts, usually I don't open it in a new tab because then suddenly you have all of these tabs. The, the reader will have all of these tabs at the top of their browser, confusing them, annoying them. You don't want confused, annoyed readers. You want happy readers. So if you're linking to your own stuff, usually do not open a new tab. If you're linking to someone else's, usually open a new tab. So that's uh, about links. Uh, we're going to take our first break. In just a moment, we'll talk about these other ones. Organizing, for example, that's categories and tags. Um, we've done some good work so far. It should be auto-saving. WordPress automatically should save what you're working on. I'm paranoid, so I always hit the Save Draft anyway. At the top right corner, go ahead and click Save Draft. Don't publish it yet. It's not ready for the world yet. I'll Save Draft. Any general questions at this point? It's about 140. We'll take a break until 150, and then we'll talk about the next point.